Welcome back to Steps to Freedom. Happy Monday. We're going to get started here shortly. Hey, Aaron, there's Maria and Vicki and Marilee, Jess. Hey, Jess. We got Anne Marie's on and Deb and Cheryl. Hey, Doris, good to see you. Turn on your cameras, ladies. Say hi to everybody. Give a wave. At least pop those cameras on real quick and give a wave. There you go. Hello. Hey, Mary, Catherine, and Citra, and Nina. Good to see you, ladies. <laughs> Jess Ann, she says she's walking in the dark from the barn, so she can't turn on, but she says hi to everybody. How you doing? Good to see everybody. Hey, Cheryl, and good. Nice. Beautiful. I hope everyone's doing well. It's getting a lot cooler. I'm seeing lots of jackets on y'all. <laughs> getting cooler. We're happy for the cool weather here in Arizona. Um, the time change, I think, has, you know, everybody's getting used to the time change. That's good. We'll have a lot of people on tonight. Thanks for being on. We're going to be talking about um, the real ultimate cure that I was outlined in the scriptures for mental illness, for really anything, emotional illness. We're going to be talking about that. Um, there's always new people visiting. So what are we doing here on this Zoom call? My name is Julie. I'm a counselor at the Arizona Deliverance Center. And I work here on the Zoom with Stephanie and Jen and Kelly. We are here because we care about people. We um went to the Arizona Deliverance Center ourselves and God helped us get deliverance. And we have been working through that and renewing our minds. So um, I work with mostly women there. I decided, yeah, a Zoom call would be cool. Maybe we could reach out to some people who visited the center before or, you know, people that just hear about us and they think maybe they need deliverance or they're dealing with some issues that we cover. So I've been working through this book, Plan of Spirit. How's it going, the class, everybody? Let me know, how is the class going? We're on week eight. Oh, lots of thumbs up, great, great. Week eight, we've been doing this for eight weeks. There's um, a total of 12 chapters, so to speak, in this book. So we're taking 12 weeks, maybe 13. But I want to take a minute and ask you, um, does anybody have any questions thus far about what we're doing here on Monday nights or about the book? And we're talking about mental illness and God, you know, God heals and he delivers. And so sometimes what we and, and what he cares about the most is our heart. He cares mostly about our heart and our relationship with him. Remember that scripture where Jesus said, there's gonna, there's gonna be on that day, people are gonna say, but Lord, we did this in your name and we cast out demons in your name and we healed the sick and we fed the poor and we preached the gospel and we did it all in your name. And he's gonna say, depart from me, I never knew you. And that is a dreadful thought. Imagine going your whole life working in service to God to only hear him say, I don't know you. Who are you? Um, we have to know the Lord. You have to know him in your heart. You can't just know about him in your mind. It doesn't matter how much service you do unto God. If you can't connect to him in your heart, then, then you need to. And maybe it's mental illness that's keeping you from connecting to God. Maybe it is um, hardness of heart that's keeping you from connecting to God. Um, so when the Zoom class, we try to cover some things that help you break down the walls of vulnerability. The Lord, you know, he wants the real you. So you have to be vulnerable. And hopefully some of the things that we cover here, you feel like you can be more vulnerable with the Lord. He is trustworthy and he is good. So 
Does anyone have any questions for me um, before we get started? You can drop them in the chat or you can, you can ask me. Um, I, um, those of you, maybe you're typing it out or maybe you're thinking about it, but as I go on, I'm gonna show you a PowerPoint and we're gonna go over part of the book. And if you have questions during that time and you need a quick answer, uh, like I said, we have other ministers. Stephanie, Stephanie, turn on your camera, say hi. I think Kelly's on here too. Kelly, can you say hi real quick? There's Steph. I think Jen is not on. She's, maybe she is. Just turn your camera on. There she is. Hey, Jen. Did you make it home? Where are you? No. Okay. I'm about to leave. <laughs> oh, you're in the small sanctuary. I see you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and Kelly, are you on so everyone can see you? Sometimes she comes on a little later, so. But if you, okay, so Jen's gonna be driving soon and Kelly, I don't know where she is yet, but Stephanie's on. And if you have a question during the teaching, you can either wait until I take a break and ask if anyone has any questions or you can ask it, Stephanie will answer or you can wait until after, okay? But does anyone have any questions for me right now before we get going? All right, I guess not, super. Okay, um, so in the book, we've covered quite a bit. We've covered quite a bit. Last week, we talked about anxiety disorders and what they are and how they manifest, how you get those spirits. I shared um, a good portion of my testimony, well, portion of it about some of the some of the things that happened to me in my life that opened the door to spirits and they came in. Some of the things that happened to me are not my fault. It wasn't that I was in willful sin, but that somebody else was sinning against me, and that sent spirits to me, um, specifically fear spirits. So that's how it happens. Um, majority of mental illnesses are caused by evil spirits. They get into the mind and they get into the soul. And so the spirits that get into the mind are called plano spirits, seducing spirits. And under the category of seducing spirits, we have a whole we have a whole rack of other spirits, one being lying spirits, spirits that lie. And so if the devil can get you to believe a lie and adopt it as your own and embrace it, that he's got a hold of you. And so it's important for us to continue reading our Bible and reminding ourselves of what Jesus taught and reminding ourselves of the truth. Because that's the thing that we come against the lies with in the mind. If you don't know God's word or you have mm, misunderstandings about the character of God, then you're going to fall for lies. You're going to fall for them and you'll be tripped up. Okay. Um, so... Tonight's, the title of tonight's message is God's Cure for Mental and Emotional Illness. And it comes right out of chapter four in the book of James. So without ado, we'll get started on that. Are you ready? Okay. You, you might write, you might get a pen and something to write on. I'm going to give you some scriptures that I think will be helpful, but you'll need to look them up because we won't have time to go over them. All right. All right, here we go. Mm. Um, sharing. All right. Um, can someone let me know when you see my PowerPoint?
Can you see it? Yes. Oh, good. Thank you, Sutra. I appreciate that. Okay, so um, again, the title of the book is Plan of Spirits. If you don't have a copy of it, you can obtain one on Amazon. They'll send it to you. If you don't have a copy and you don't have the finances to get one, they're $20. Send me an email and I'll send you one. Steps to Freedom, ADC at gmail.com. This is week eight, and this book was written by Michael W. Smith. All right, I want to mention thank you so much for your donations. And yes, once again, I'm receiving them through Venmo, Zelle, PayPal, and cash is always welcome. All right, God's cure for mental and emotional illness. All right, so this is James chapter four, verse seven through 11. It says this, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. And be afflicted and mourn. Let your laughter return to mourning in your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Speak evil of no one. So... Um, Brother Mike says that this, this, um, these verses hold the key to deliverance from the powerful controlling spirits in the brain and provide an individualized written rehabilitation plan for almost all the mental illnesses listed in the DSM. When followed carefully, this process has never failed to cure any form of emotional or mental illness. <clears throat> it is foolproof and will lead to complete recovery. And so we're gonna break it down. And as I do, we're gonna go step by step. And there are eight of these steps. And as I go through them, I want you to make a note. Maybe there's one of these steps that you need to revisit. So you may feel like, yeah, I do number one, I do number, I've done number two, I'm really good at doing number three, but number four, number five, number six, I never really thought about before. I never did anything with it. So as we go through it, I want you to maybe make some notes <clears throat> on which of these steps you need to go back through and really pray. All right, step number one. Submit yourself to God. This is a daily, daily submission. Every day, sometimes every morning, afternoon, and night, you have to submit yourself to God. You must surrender the control of your life to the Holy Spirit. Now, there are a lot of things that we want in life. And, but we don't have them. And when we want something and we can't get it or it's not coming, we can start to feel anxious. Well, that is not submitting to God. If we allow anxiety and worry and stress, now, if we allow that to manifest in our lives, we allow that feeling to continue on, then we are not submitting to God. You have to realize you're no longer in charge. You must step down and submit your will over to the Lord. Self-centeredness must end. Now, there are some of you on here tonight, you have mental illness. You are sick. And you want to be well. Well, the Lord wants you to be well. But more importantly, he wants you to submit to him. You have to, you, it's not like you want to be well more than God wants you to be well. And you have to stop saying things like, well, I just got to hurry up and get better. Lord, what's taking you so long? That is not trusting the Lord. And so when we get anxious about something that's not working out in our lives, we're not submitting to God. 
And so this is a daily submission. For some of us, it's hourly, <laughs> okay? It's hourly. It's not all about you. It's all about Jesus. And so if you find yourself looking inward a lot, you find yourself trying to fix yourself all the time, trying to figure it out, you're self-centered. And you're not submitting to God. That's not self that's not submission. All right, number two, you must resist the devil. You must declare war on the spirits and sin in your body, brain, and lifestyle. You must develop a hatred for anything of Satan. Um, these scriptures are, are speak to this. We have to hate what God hates. I had a dream once where um, I was, I think I was in the bathroom or something and there's someone was trying to get in the door. And in my dream, I was pushing against the door as this other opposing force was pushing against me, pushing against me. And I was pushing against the door, trying to keep it closed. Kind of like this guy in the picture. I had to exert a lot of energy and muscle and strength to close the door. We have to resist the devil. Sometimes that means taking a lot of force, a lot of energy. Um, I, I've been trying this diet, <laughs> the carnivore diet, and I really think that's working well for me. Meat, I love meat. And um, it tastes great to me. I love it. Well, today I go into the center and there is a bunch of cookies on the table. And I'm like, dang it. What are those chocolate chip cookies doing there? The problem was, is I didn't eat a very hearty breakfast. So I wasn't satisfied. I was a little hungry. And so when the temptation to eat sugar and carbs came, I didn't have any strength. <laughs> I didn't have any strength to push that devil back. Um, tempting me with sugar and carbs. Now, those two things on a carnivore diet are a no-no. So I just lost it today. I lost it and I ate the cookies. <laughs> um, I like to tell Jen that I fell off the wagon. She's my accountability partner on this, this quest for healthier living. And um, I told her, I said, why'd you bring these cookies here? We had a potluck last night and they were left over. But I didn't have the strength because I was, I was hungry. I was, I don't know, I was hungry. And so I just had a little taste of the cookie and then I didn't have the strength to resist. And so it could come as, as easy as that. It could be sweet. It could be a sin. You know, it could be um, you're at a party, you know, we're going to have holidays coming up and you might be around people and food and drink and such that are tempting to you. And you have to realize when the temptation comes, you have to be, if you're not submitted to God, you will not have the strength to resist the devil when he comes, because he's going to come. Okay. And this is part of it. If we don't resist the devil and when the lies are coming into our mind and we just let them come, then we're not resisting. You might feel like you're submitting to God, but you're not resisting. And so you need to do those two things. All right. Um, yeah, I, I blew everything today. I blew the fast. I blew my diet. <laughs> I did not resist very well today. I'm sorry. I apologize. Please forgive me. <laughs> be better tomorrow. <laughs> um, number three. Uh-oh. 
and my computer lost it. All right, there we go. We need to draw near to God. You must thirst for God's presence and desire him more than anything else in your life. If you are struggling with mental illness or addiction, you have to get a hold of this. The presence of the Holy Spirit is your key to victory. You go first and God moves second. You have to draw near to God often, every day, singing, thanking him. Thank you, Lord, for my life. Thank you for this day. I worship you, Lord. I thank you for the opportunities. I thank you for the opportunities. I had an opportunity today that I got. I was really grateful and I realized something. I was in the right place at the right time. And I overheard a woman talking about needing a repair on her car. And I heard her speaking and I thought I would interject myself. Uh, the one person she asked the question to didn't know the answer. So I piped up and said, um, I don't know what the cost would be, but if you live around here, I know a really good shop that you could bring your car to. And this is the guy's name and he's honest. And then we talked a little bit and then she said, well, God bless you. And then we talked a little more and I said, you know what? And on top of that, that man, that mechanic, he's a Christian and he's trustworthy. So you can bring him to that shop. And I said, and God bless you. And so I was like, wow, Lord, you just used me in a way. Um, and I felt closer to the Lord in that moment, right? I was like, oh, Lord, you saw her and you saw me and you brought us together so I could speak you know, I could, I could help her and it felt so good. And so we must desire his presence, especially um, if we're struggling with something and especially mental illness, if the, because the enemy is shooting all these lies all the time. And if you get overwhelmed by all of that, you're going to feel far away from God. The presence of the Lord is peace. The presence of the Lord is, it seems easy. The presence of the Lord is, is I don't know, it's calm. It's very calm and peaceful and exciting at the same time. Like I felt a lot of peace speaking with this lady, but I felt, um, I felt excited that, that um, the Lord, he saw me, he saw her and he said, okay, I'm going to put the two of them together so I can bless the both of them. And that was really great. I'm so grateful for it. So you can get into the presence of the Lord by being grateful, by singing to him, by um, worshiping the Lord. You can get into his presence by just raising your hand like this picture of the man is just on his knees, raising his hands up to the sky um, in, in a posture of reverence. You know, just getting down on your knees and being quiet before the Lord is a form of worship, is drawing near to him. So I encourage you to get out of your routine. If you normally get on your knees to pray, stand up and raise up your hands and pray. If you normally stand up and raise your hands and get on your knees and bow your head and, and um, draw close to the Lord. But you wanna do this often, often, at least, you know, once a day, if not several times a day. That's number three. All right, number four. Cleanse your hands and your life from sin. Now, um, before I knew about deliverance, I used to say I could either feed the monster or I could starve the monster. You also need to understand that when you you're receiving the lies and you start to meditate on those lies, you are feeding the monster within. You're feeding the mental illness. You're feeding anxiety, depression. You are feeding bipolar. You're feeding 
BPD, you're feeding narcissism, you're feeding all of these things. Sin is the food the demons feed on in the brain. And so if you are sinning, you know, um, whatever it is, a lot of times for women, it's, it's, it's fantasy. We want to daydream about our life and our future. And, and we do it a little too much. Or um, anger will rise up. The situation's frustrating and then we act out. That is when we act out in our anger, we are feeding those demons. When we, we're receiving the lies and then we start believing and acting upon those lies, we're feeding that, that mental illness demon feeding it. So you can starve them out also, weaken them to the point where they will collapse. I, like I said, I, I knew that if I did certain things, I was feeding this, I called it the monster. And um, if I did not do those things, then I was starving it. And so that's why I chose these graphics. You know, you can make it, you decide, are you going to feed it or are you going to starve it? You must refuse to continue to listen to negativity and lies. You have to. Um, if you are prone to negativity, you have to always think. And then look at what did you write in that text? What did you write in that email? Does it have a negative tone? Well, some people think, well, I'll go on the negative side just in case. I'll go, I'll go on the the lesser side, I'll, I'll say something, you know, this isn't right, correct? This is wrong. This couldn't be the answer. That's all negative. That's all negative. And so if you know that about yourself, you need to rewrite the email, okay? I know that I'm a to the point type of person. I write an email, I write the meat first. I need more ink for my printer. So then I go back and I go, okay, I need to soften this up. Hi, Joanne. Um, hope you're having a great day. Hey, do you think I can get some more ink for my printer? All right, thank you. Let me know. <laughs> okay, I know my personality. My personality is um, straight to the point without the fluff. But I know the fluff is really important. I have learned. And if you're on the negative side, everything you think comes out negative. And so you have to go back and you have to reword that text message. You need to reword that email. You got to rethink what's coming out of your mouth. This is one of the ways you're going to starve that monster. Okay. So many people I've worked with they don't even know they're negative. They don't even realize what they're doing because they've been living, listening to negativity for so long. All right. Um, I'm going to look right here. Uh, it's possible. Okay. So I just see some, some chat now. All right. Um, if you refuse, you must refuse to continue to listen to the negativity and lies and the kingdom of darkness is not founded upon them, okay? It is not founded upon these lies. That's John 8, 44. I can't say enough about this. This is iniquity inside of you. This is, you had a bunch of negative experiences and it's it was had such a damaging effect upon you that you made these vows and you said, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna be hopeful again. I'm never going to trust again. I'm gonna, you know, it could be the devil talking to me. So I'm not gonna trust, I'm not gonna trust it. And it's so negative and you have, you're feeding these demons and they'll just keep lying to you. And that's where the mental illness is. All right, number five, where am I? Oh, there we go. Purify your heart of iniquity. 
internal sins such as resentment, bad feelings, anger, frustration, bitterness, jealousy, envy, and lust must be com forsaken completely. You either throw it in the trash or it will fuel further negative feelings. You're either going to add gas. It's either going to add gasoline to that fire of resentment and it will continue to burn or you've got to trash it. You're going to say no more. I am not going to, I'm not going to be angry over this. No, I'm not. This frustration I feel inside, no, you don't belong to me. I am not going to be frustrated that I can't get this thing to work. Okay, I screwed up today. I wasn't even supposed to eat today, and I ended up eating the wrong, I did eat, and then I ate the wrong thing. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to keep beating myself up because I screwed up. I go, I screwed up. I'm sorry, now I'm confessing to everybody. And then, and then that's it. I'm moving on. I am not going to be bitter against myself. I'm not going to, I'm not going to have bad feelings about it. I, I, it's just, it's something that happened and that's it. All right. Next Monday, I'll get better. Praise God. That's number five. You got to purify your heart of iniquity. And that's the sin that's inside unforgiveness, jealousy, envy, lust. It's in there. It's not something you're doing outside, outside of you stealing or cussing somebody out because they cut they they cut you off in traffic it's, it's the stuff that's going on in the inside of you it's internal internal okay we'll take a break right now and stop the share all right how's it going so far all right does anyone have any questions at all All right. Um, I'm good. Who are you? I'm Julie. <laughs> Hi, Julie. Welcome. Hi, welcome. Um, I had. Is it on uh, your camera by chance? Mm. Oh, there you are. Beautiful. Nice to see um, you. What came to me when you were speaking was, um, you know, the Bible says with all of our getting the understanding. I spend I spend a lot of time um, just speaking truth to counteract everything but what I wanted to say that the Bible says there's a scripture that says where mercy I mean where truth and mercy kiss each other around your neck but uh, it said there's a scripture that says mercy truth and mercy purge iniquity and that's what I like could you repeat that scripture again that what purges iniquity is truth and mercy is what brings righteousness. All right. And Someone I love, just asked I, I love in the that. Chat. Oh, that's awesome. Someone just asked in the chat, how do I get rid of iniquity? Truth well, and mercy. And you know what? I just speak it and I give it, you know, I mean, yes. if I don't, if I, if I don't feel anything, because he says, when you water, you'll be watered. And you yes. don't want to be stagnant. So just, um, you know, I had a girlfriend call. She was going through some things. And she's a minister. She's really good. But she doesn't know addresses. And for some reason, mm -hmm. I know scriptures with addresses. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, iron sharpens iron. So we just say these things back and forth. And what it does is it edifies and builds you up. And I said, get off the hamster wheel. Because the lies are telling me one thing, but I just continue to shoot and say exactly what God says. Amen. Yes, that's that is perfect. Uh, truth and mercy. Can you find that scripture for us? Yes, I'll find it and then I'll type it in. Super. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You know that internal iniquity is that a bad attitude it's that it's that wrong thinking it's that resentment it's that 
oh, why is that person succeeding and I'm not feeling, right? It, it's yuck. And first you have to recognize it. And then you can use the word of God to speak the truth. Julie. I just found it. It says here in... Um... Uh, Proverbs 16, 6, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men men depart from evil. Right. And then it gives different versions here. In mercy and truth, atonement is provided for iniquity, and by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. And by mercy and truth, iniquity is atoned for, and by the fear of Jehovah, men depart from evil. But anyway, we know that that Right. Uh, wisdom the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord so anyway yeah that's good Apart from that's evil. good I was just reminded that we didn't even pray Jen she's on the road now no we didn't even pray I'm going to pray really fast because um, sometimes I get thinking about what am I talking about and I'm been I guess in that in that I don't know, state of prayer, I guess, all day, because I'm like, Lord, what do I do? And I need this, and I need help with that. And what do you want me to say? And, you know, so I'm always kind of going back and forth. But um, I just bless this time together in the name of Jesus. I just bless every single person who's come on here tonight. we got 49 of us on. I want to speak a blessing. I speak the name of Jesus over you and I speak a blessing over you. I pray that your mind would receive truth tonight. I bind every spirit that is trying to bring confusion upon you, spirits that are monitoring, causing distractions. I bind you in Jesus name. You're not permitted to interact with us at this time. You were not permitted to, to interrupt this service, this Zoom call, our discussion. We command you to leave in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit that's masquerading as the Holy Spirit, I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I, I ask that what, what it, this word that I'm speaking out tonight, Lord, that it would have a hundredfold, that, that, that the word would fall on good soil, good soil, and grow up and bear fruit. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, thanks for that intermission. <laughs> All right, did anyone else have a question? or something they like to share. Um, there it is. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. I love it. That's great. And that is Proverbs 6. Yes, Doris. So I've been working on negativity, and I still sometimes am a little too direct, and I don't mean to be mean. It just comes across kind of like that, but... Um, so the iniquity thing, I think I do probably, that's the heart of iniquity that the Lord has been addressing with me for actually like the past couple of years, actually maybe more than that, uh, more than the outward sin, because, you know, like we can all kind of look fine on the outside and it's on the inside. And when you did the bitterness, I didn't really think that I had that much, but as I began to, and that is um, the one where something happened that night at my house. So I wasn't able to, I was on, but I wasn't on. And then I ended up having to leave early when I went on Tuesday night and um, my cousin did die. And, um, but just this whole, as God works on it, it's not like you ask for forgiveness or you release forgiveness release negativity by faith to the Lord, that it is over and done with. You have to keep going and going again and again, whether it's bitterness, frustration, anger. Uh, so we get frustration when we're not patient, you know, when we want to do it in our timing, not in God's timing. So 
I ha- the, the Holy Spirit every day just like convicts me, you know, uh, on stuff. And then we could be prideful or we could say, you know what, I am in the wrong, Lord. And you have to keep going at it because it ha- there are these really these layers of things, you know, and and um, when you're doing, uh, let's say, I want to use we were trying to move, uh, uh, turn a, uh, uh, a nut, uh, on a bolt and that nut hadn't been turned in a lot in like years and it, we still haven't been able to do it, but we have, you know, to just loosen it, you know, like little by little, it's not going to take us years to loosen it, but you know, that bitterness, that negativity, I, was brought up in negativity although i didn't think it was negativity it was disguised as some other things instead you could call it oh helping you to grow and learn you know and it doesn't mean everything has to be positive but that there are negative tones and so it's not going to take one time it's probably not going to take 500 times it may take like twenty thousand times or fifty thousand times of just pressing in but eventually it it like breaks and then all of a sudden it seems like everything is just like happening and going you know like you're not frustrated as much anymore i noticed this in my driving i just was pressing into it and i noticed that i am more patient with my driving that someone does something I'm blessing them, but I'm not blessing them and like, well, I just bless you, you know, like that grudging bless, you know, like they do in the South. I don't know. I don't live. Is that what they do, Stephanie? <laughs> well, bless your heart. <laughs> you know, They don't really mean it, I don't think. Uh, anyway, you just have to keep pressing in. And then when you feel the need to complain, think of it, just memorizing a couple of verses, Proverbs, um, 2118. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. And just thinking about that verse every day, when I start to say something or respond in social media or something, man, I have to like erase some of those things I write because, oh, that is kind of like speaking death over the situation. You know, and, and, uh, oh, well, I'm not getting healed. You know, maybe God, I heard this uh, in one of my, um, in a chat. Well, maybe God just wants me to stay sick. And I'm like, stop speaking those words because God wants your healing. You know, don't declare those things and don't write those things. Don't think those things because, you know, the enemy's going to come at you and he's going to say, you didn't get healed. You're still negative. You're still bitter. You know, well, maybe just a little bit, but I am a little bit better now because I have released that bitterness. I didn't even know I was bitter towards my ex ex mother-in-law. <laughs> I hadn't even <laughs> thought about her in years. And the Holy Spirit said, you have to release that bitterness. And I'm like, I don't even know what that bitterness is, but Lord, I release it to you, you know, and it just felt like freeing too. And if we're open to listening to the Lord and the Lord wasn't saying, oh, you have to spend the next six hours praying about that bitterness. I think I just prayed about it like in less than a minute and I just felt a release, you know, you just obey God. But other times that process may take longer, but it doesn't mean you're going to have to pray for eight hours at a time. You know, you release it when it comes. And then the next time it comes, you release it again to God. You give, you you extend forgiveness, bless them. Lord, I pray that their life is good, you know, and that is just so much better. I have even heard so much hateful stuff over the last few days from some people and you know what? I hope that the Lord blesses your life and and not like meaning in a sarcastic way, but man, you're hurting a lot to say stuff like that. I, I'm sorry. Sorry you feel that way. I'm going to you know, pray for part you. Part of the mind renewal is 
and you know the term like brainwashing right so we we have a way of thinking a way of living and as we renew our mind like Boris was just explaining then our actions are renewed and we start to act differently we respond differently I mean that's what it means becoming more like Jesus right and but it takes time it's a process it is a process it is it's like ever ever moving forward i used to um when i first became a christian it was like god said he would show me and this is the way he showed it to me is i kept become i became aware and i called it his spotlight he would like shine his his flashlight his mag light on an area of my life and i kept recognizing you know let's say it was gossip I would be aware I'm gossiping right now. Oh my gosh, I'm gossiping again. Oh my, that person's gossiping. Like I became aware of it. It's like saying, you know, you want a red, a red car and all of a sudden you see red cars everywhere. <laughs> and, and that's, you know, that's the, that is God's mercy, huh? That's his grace. That's how he helps us. And so um, as, as we've been going along, of this journey together, I'm sure the Lord is pointing out something in your life and saying, I want you to work on that. That's the thing I want you to work on. And Doris, she's um, faithfully working on these things. That's good. We'll see you on Tuesday, right, Doris? Yes, Lord willing. All right. Praise God. All right, I'm going to get back to the um, to my little PowerPoint here. All right. All right, so that was number five, purifying your heart of iniquity. And I love our scripture from Proverbs 16, 6. That's great. And there's some other ones there. Be sure to look them up. 2 Corinthians 2, 14. Here's a couple more of them too. Matthew 12, 35. Well, Matthew 15, verse 8 through 20. You can take a look at those. All right. Um, there we go. Number six. This is an interesting one. Be afflicted and mourn. The demons in the brain can cause you to develop a casual attitude towards sin and may have blunted your emotions and your remorse for the pain you have caused the Lord, yourself, or others because of willful sin. They can cause you to develop defense mechanisms such as laughing, acting foolishly, or making jokes about sinful behaviors or the misfortune of others. You must have remorse for what you have done and confess your sin and failures. I couldn't. I was reading that and I all I could think was this greasy grace that's out there. The grace of God is like pure gold. It covers us. It's so costly. It costs Jesus everything. But when we have a casual attitude towards sin, I met a lady today. She was married to a man. They got they had a couple kids. They got divorced. She went and had different boyfriends. They got back together. They lived together, um, not married, and then had another child. And she told me to my she said to me, she told me that story, and then she told me, she's like, I've always trusted the Lord. I said, No, you haven't. I said, You got together with your ex. You know, and um, you, you divorced. That's adultery. You guys had a kid together. And on top of that, you had the child out of wedlock. Um, and so her, her attitude, before I explain why this was so serious, um, her attitude was just like, yeah, you know, no big deal. Had a kid later in life and okay, where's the husband, you know? And so I was like, this is, I think this is what it, what it means, this greasy grace. 
people. Um, there's a couple that are coming to the center and they want to get married. Well, they've been living together. And they asked they asked Brother Rick to marry them. And he's like, um, I'm gonna have a talk first. <laughs> no, I don't I don't know about that. that's not you can't be living together. Like this is not okay. So there are there are sin that we have in our lives. And if we're if we have a casual attitude towards it, or we have seared our emotions in some way about it, like, eh, it's not that big deal. Yeah, I got drunk last night, you know. It's it's not good. It's not taking it seriously. And so a person who's struggling with mental illness, let's say depression or anxiety, and you're like, well, I just have, you know, I just have a couple of glasses of wine to bring down the anxiety. Oh yeah, I overdid it and I had a whole bottle. You know, yeah, you know, no big deal. Well, no, it is a big deal, you know, because the Bible tells us don't, don't get drunk. You know, I used to always think, gosh, imagine if I was drunk and then all of a sudden we got raptured and now I'm standing before Jesus and I'm drunk. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. That's a horrible thought. That used to scare me a lot. Not enough because it didn't stop me. But um, so if we, if, if you are struggling with mental illness and you have a casual attitude towards sin or your emotions are blunted towards the seriousness of sin, you got to do something about that. You got to repent. You got to be afflicted and mourn and say, gosh, Lord, I have been, I have been taking, accepting your grace and mercy like it's nothing. And so I think that's what this means, to be afflicted and mourn. We have to look at our lives. And, and for most of you, probably, you know, the, the majority of your life is pretty clean. And you're walking in, in purity before the Lord. But maybe there's an area of your life that you're not doing so well. You know, you need to pray. You need to ask the Holy Spirit to help you not have a casual attitude towards that sin. All right. Number seven. Ah. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the God's mighty hand, and he may lift you up in due time. All your anxieties, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Yes, number seven is humble yourself. Pride will keep any form of sickness or evil spirit in your body permanently. Narcissism will prevent your recovery. The key to deliverance is a humble and broken heart with a contrite spirit. Okay. It doesn't mean you can't experience the joy of the Lord at some other point. But if you are struggling with mental illness and you're okay with it, I think there's some pride there. You can't, you're not going to get well. You're not going to get delivered if you have pride. There's some people that they, they are, they get messages in their mind or they see signs, numbers or colors or different verses pop out. And they're like, oh, God's talking to me. God's talking to me. And I used to think that way. I used to think that God was leaving me little breadcrumbs along the way to lead me on the path of righteousness. But that's not biblical at all. It's actually it's prideful. Um, we're, we are called to live by faith. And, and not that God doesn't give us reassurance. He does. I mean, um, there absolutely have been times where either I was praying or during ministry or um, while I was helping somebody that I felt like a verse would come really strong toward, you know, it, it came like in my mind really strong and encouraged me a lot. And some, some of you have gotten these verses and now it's your life verse. You hang on to it with everything. Um, God is speaking to us, but he speaks in a small, quiet voice and he's not, um, I don't know. He's not like 
doing tricks to speak to us. It's a, it can be a form of pride. And any form of pride is going to keep you sick and tormented by these evil spirits. You have to um, really take honest inventory of yourself, right? And any kind of narcissism, self-centeredness, oh my gosh. A lot of times people with anxiety disorders or um, ruminating thoughts all the time, all they want to do is think about themselves. What is the demon doing to me? What is God saying to me? What What did I, what, you know, how am I agreeing with the demon? How did the devil trick me? They're always like analyzing it over and over and over again. I'm not saying analyzing, you know, what did God say mean? What did that dream mean? Okay, that's okay. But to to be always just self-centered, that is, that's a form of narcissism. That's a narcissistic behavior, right? Because then what you do is you're now, um, you know, your relationships with other people, you, you will view them as, you know, they're to serve me. I need someone to listen to me. I need someone to do for me. I need someone to give me advice. You're always looking to get for yourself. And that's prideful. So we want to be humble. We want to be humble. We want to give grace and mercy to people. It's the key to deliverance. Isaiah 66, one, it's not on here. You can add it to these scriptures. Talks about the God of all creation and how he basically has command over everything in the world. But the one thing he doesn't command, he doesn't have the, he doesn't control is your heart. And you have to give it to him. That is like his most prized possession, the heart, a contrite heart, a broken heart. All right. And lastly, number eight, do not speak negatively about yourself or others. This is a hard one, especially if you don't like yourself very much, <laughs> but you need to recognize yourself. What are you saying? What are you saying about others? Are you nitpicking? I thought this picture of the, the chimps were hilarious because you know how chimpanzees are always looking for that tiny, tiny little bug in the hair? They're always searching, kind of getting the little bug and they're eating it, right? And that's like a nitpicker. The nitpicker is gonna pass by everything that's good and find out one little thing that's off. They're looking for the one little mistake. They're looking for the little tiny mess up. And maybe you're looking for it in yourself. I mean, how many women have a, a magnifying mirror? <laughs> We're looking at ourselves. Oh my gosh, what is that on my nose? Gosh, you know, no one ever saw it on your nose, but you see it because you have this magnifying mirror of 25 and you see all these flaws on your face, and that's all you focus on are the flaws. And so you're nitpicking, you're picking at the little tiny things that's wrong, or you're nitpicking about others. Spirits in the brain spend most of their time degrading you and causing you to criticize yourself and others. They also use negative facts against you by reminding you of your past failures and poor choices. You have to stop it. Okay, look, if anyone's got a reason to complain about themselves, I do. I sold a four bedroom house in 2019, or actually, I guess it was 2018. I sold the house, no, 2019. I had a very nice townhouse, completely remodeled, it was great. But then I had this idea, I'm gonna move to the mountains and I'm gonna buy a cabin and I'm gonna live off the land. And then the Lord called me back to Phoenix in 2020. And guess what? The housing prices were through the roof and they still are. Do you think I can buy that same house that I had? No. You know, I get reminded of that sometimes and I'm like, Lord, you are bigger than my mistakes. 
you are more than able that to direct me to where, you know, to be a homeowner again, you are more than able. I can't keep reminding myself of my screw ups and either can you, it'll keep you sick. Okay. It'll keep you in a negative cycle, a negative thinking pattern. Only the truth can set you free. The truth is that I gave my life to Jesus. Now my life belongs to Jesus and he's the one who will direct my steps. And so when it's time to buy a home or whatever, he's going to direct me. And when I start to get into worry or stress or anxiety over it, I have to say, oh no, the truth is the Lord directs my path. He directs my steps. I have a plan and it's good to have a plan. I think you should plan, but the Lord will direct your path. Okay. If you are struggling with mental illness, you cannot keep blaming yourself and reminding yourself of these past failures, you have to meditate on the truth, the word of God. That becomes reality now, not the fact <laughs> that, that I was listening to a different spirit, I guess, that said, sell your house, now's the time to sell. Because in 2019, it was not the time to sell. The time to sell was last year. The time to sell is not now. The time, the time to, to sell and make a really good profit was last year, not 2019. I was listening to something else, okay? Agreeing with the spirits will allow them to remain in your brain until you die. You have to stop agreeing. I can't agree with the, the condemning spirit that comes out my mind that says, now you'll never own a home again. Now you'll never qualify. Now you'll never blah, 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 okay? I cannot allow that spirit to continue talking to me or it'll stay in there or it'll get in. Um, you must remove all forms of thought, negative feelings for yourself and release all those you have damaged, um, who have damaged you in any way from your soul. Any person that's hurt you. Last week, I gave a testimony about a man who really hurt me. He hurt me in a significant way. And the, with the Lord's help. And I was determined. I was determined to get him out of my soul because I was being tormented in my dreams. God gave me the strength to forgive from my heart. And that's what you have to do. You have to get rid of all the negative feelings you have towards that person that really, really hurt you. Or you get to stay sick. Okay? Maybe one through seven, you're like, I got it down pat. But it's number eight. Number eight is where you're falling down. Maybe, you know, I mean, I... I have shared over the time, I had a stepsister who rejected me repeatedly since the time I was five. She still, if I saw her today, she's rejected. It's a, I'm over it. I, and the Holy Spirit helped me, but I now bless her. I pray, you know, whenever I think about it, I'll pray for her. I want her to get saved. I want her husband saved. I want her children saved. I don't, I don't feel the yuck I used to feel when I would see her and her family come across on my Facebook feed. I, I've released her. It's gone. The awe is gone. You have to deal with it. You just have to make up your mind and then walk through the steps. And every time the feeling rises up or comes at you, whichever it is, you like, no, mm-mm. That's, I already decided, I already repented. I already decided I forgive that person. No, that's a lie. I don't have negative feelings towards them anymore. And if you find yourself, you know, having that grudge or whatever, Lord, I'm sorry. I bless that person who hurt me. I bless them in Jesus name. I am releasing them. I'm not going to talk bad about that person. I'm not going to nitpick myself. I'm going to 
not speak negatively anymore. This last one, forgiveness alone will not work. You have to go deeper. The negative emotions, thoughts, and attitudes, which is ought, regarding others must also be removed through daily practice of mind renewal and repentance. You must release them to Christ. You have to. This is how you're going to get well. Maybe the mental illness that you're suffering is hanging on this one thing. It's possible. That brother that, that kicked you out of the house when you lived with him for a short time, you know, and now, and now all you can think is, oh my gosh, is he going to do that to me again? Or am I going to suffer the same, you know, um, rejection as I suffered before? You have to get rid of it. No, I'm trusting the Lord. I am going to trust the Lord. I'm going to bless that person. I'm going to bless my brother. I'm going to bless my sister. I'm going to bless my coworkers. I'm going to bless that, that minister that tried to kick me, get me kicked out, that speaking, you know, lies about me. I don't care. I am not going to hold on to these negative feelings in Jesus name. And you have to release the negative feelings and, and reject them and be like, no, uh, -uh I'm not going to allow myself to feel that way. No way. I am not holding on to this mental illness. I am forgiven. And I am releasing the negative emotions right now. And I'm going to catch every negative thought that comes. I'm not going to, I'm not going to feed it anymore. All right. So this is what we have to do. So I just pointed out eight steps, eight areas that you need to look over. If you struggle with a mental illness, any form, anxiety, depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, you, you struggle with any type of that emotional distress. Look at those eight and, and ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, where where am I hung up? What step am I not flourishing in? He'll show you. He'll show you. Probably within 24 hours, he'll show you. Okay? So, so that's it. Um, that's the part of the book where it talks about God's care for mental and emotional illness. James chapter 4, verses um, seven through 11. Does anyone have any questions for me? Thank you, Aaron. Any questions? All right, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray for you. Okay. Um, maybe there's an area you're like, yeah, I'm I, I, number such and such. That's the one I'm struggling with. Elena, hi, my friend from Tucson. How are you? Hi, I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. Be careful on the uh, road. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm, I was just wanting to ask, because you mentioned numbers. Um, and, I mean, I, I followed yeah. that for a little bit, but not to the point where it was excessive, and I even stopped. I'm like, I don't, I don't know how good, like how much I should depend on like focusing on a specific number that I felt like God was speaking to me about. Um, but when you mentioned it, there was like this type of, when you're like, I, you, I don't know if you said it was like linked to pride or something like that. Um, but I felt some type of way and I'm like, why do I feel like, why, why do I, why do I feel like I'm getting angry that she's talking about that? And so I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, is this, is this not true? Like if what, what, like, have I made it an idol, I guess, you know, or have I put it in a place where maybe God did speak to me at once, but now it's like, like, can that be like, is that pride? Is that focusing on numbers okay. pride? Well, let me, let's back it up. I'm so glad that you <laughs> are sharing this. All right. So, hmm. There is legitimacy to numbers, okay? There is biblical numerology. 
The uh -huh. problem comes in is when we start to look at everything as if it means something. Because okay. the enemy sees it and then he starts telling you to look at the clock when it says one, one, one. Right. Or he says, look over there, there's a number seven or whatever, right. 14, you know? Mm -hmm. So the problem comes in is when we, when the enemy gets involved and he starts pointing out this and that it's a, it's a monitoring spirit. Um, and it can be a, a, a stalker, a demon that stalks you through numbers. Mm. So the, the pride part, and I think the anger part that might be rising up in you is that demon got you to trust them using numbers. And now I'm calling them out. So let me ask you, in what way, in what numbers were you noticing? Where were you noticing them? Um, well, it started at the beginning of this year. I remember I was, the, the Lord had took me to the book of Esther and I was just reading that. And I just felt like I was just studying that book. And I remember the book, the number 17, like just, just coming to my, my memory, like just being evident and I remember just praying about it. I'm like what does this number mean and I'm the people that um I had asked some people that I had looked up to at the time and I was just asking I'm like I feel like the Lord is showing me the number 17 but I don't know really what to do with it and then he looked up what that number was uh, in the Bible like how like the number 17 book in the Bible and it was Esther and so it just meant something like I, I felt like that was like a confirmation um, in some sort of way. And so, but I feel like I kind of took that number. And I was like, wow, God actually spoke and made it. And as I'm talking, I, I feel like I'm realizing what I did, but I looked to that number and the number seven too, like just those two numbers is what I focused on. But I feel like today I just, it's weird because today too, I just kept seeing that number and I intentionally, um, like when I was going through deliverance and like going to Phoenix and stuff often, I was intentionally like stopped looking at that because I was like, I don't know what is true. And so I don't know, maybe I, I just recently slacked off. I feel like I have. Um, and I've just today, it just kept popping up to like the number 17, the number 17. I'm like, okay, Laura, like, what are you speaking to? Are you speaking to me through this? Like, is this, you know, but then I. Let me ask, let me ask you a quick question. Yeah. When you said the number kept popping up, what do you mean by that? Like, I would look, <laughs> I would look and there'd be the number you would 17. see the number 17. Um, yeah. And I would, yeah. And so that's been on my mind, to be honest, but I'm like, I've, I've been struggling with a lot of things too. So in my mind, I'm like, maybe this is the way God is re reassuring me, you know? Um, I believe like what God meant with the whole, like, I believe what the Lord meant with Esther and all that stuff was for the church and not necessarily like, I don't know. I just feel like the, a, a lot of stuff is happening regarding prayer and, and fasting and just intercession. Right. I think that's what it was, but I feel like I made the, the, the number and the number seven and, and put it on a pedestal because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of the, yeah, I'm, as I'm talking, I, I, I made it an idol, I believe. And I've allowed that to, yeah. Good. Yeah, when I got angry, I got angry when you started speaking and I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't know how accurate I am. <laughs> so, yeah, so the pride comes in when you, when a person, when the pride rises up, the person's like, will defend it to the end. No, yeah, I wanted to number. God <laughs> speaks 17 to me. Yeah, I'm special. And I was 17. right, and that was about to like I'm end Esther. the live. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's yeah. I was like, I was like, no, this 
like I that the thought I'm like I should probably get off the live and I'm like no because I felt when I was leaving work for the Lord to give told me to come on so I'm like okay like I yeah I need deliverance man <laughs> that's good we're gonna get it take care of it tonight you know um the Lord is um <laughs> So the enemy, right, he will take something that the Lord gives and then he wants to capitalize on it. So I sometimes will have a dream. I'll have a prophetic dream or a dream I think is maybe prophetic. And so in the past, before I understood more about the spirit world, I um, I would have my dream. I would get up in the middle of the night. I would write down all the details of that dream. I would pray about that dream. I would talk about that dream. I was looking up, what does this mean? And what does that mean? And, and now I'm distracted. It became a distraction. After I went through a significant amount of deliverance and I prayed for many months, don't give me any dreams. And I bind that dream giver. I don't want it. Then I was quiet for a long time. I knew I was having like whatever dreams, you know, pizza dreams, whatever. Um, and I would have dramatic dreams. And, and I was just like, okay, whatever. I'm not paying attention to that dream as a distraction. And then I had a dream that I was like, oh, that was weird. And then it it and then it it was a prophetic dream and I didn't even know it. And then it came to pass later that day and it helped me mm -hmm. minister to somebody. And so then I was like, Ooh, that's interesting. And so even now today I'm, you know, let's say I'm trying to understand something in my life and I'll have a dream. And then I have to go, is this my mind trying to work out the solution? Is this from the Lord or is this from the enemy? And so I have one person, he's my brother, he's pretty good at it. And I talk to him and I say, you know, and I don't go to him often because it's only if the dream makes a real impression upon me that I go, let me get a second opinion on this. I don't write them down anymore. I used to write all my dreams down and they would take pages and pages, right? And I couldn't figure out, you know, I always thought, I thought all the dreams, I thought all these spiritual type dreams were from the Lord. Um, even that, even when I get attacked in my dreams, a lot of times I'll just wake up and rebuke the devil and go back to sleep. That's it. Done. Mm -hmm. Because I learned that the numbers, the dreams, the spiritual experiences are, uh, most of them are distractions. Mm -hmm from the enemy even yeah, though it's kind of just oh i'm sorry yeah just saying that they're distractions and and they're they they send us down like a little rabbit trail yeah it's kind of discouraging to be honest because i i i don't know i'm expecting a certain amount of deliverance and then when something pops up i'm just like like wow you know like just like this instance i I really was trusting in that, you know, like, I'm not going to lie. Like it was something that I was trusting in. And, um, I'm like, how, how deceived can I be, you know? And I don't want to, um, Oh, don't be hard on yourself. Hey, no, no, don't do that. Elena. These demons have been tracking humans for thousands of years. They know their job. They have been watching you since you were born. They've been tracking you. They know what you'll, like a fish, right? They know what bait to cast out and what you'll look to. And so you have the Holy Spirit though. And that's what's awesome because you're here tonight, you're listening. And now you're like, wait a minute. I think the number 17 has been messing with me. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's not the number, it's what's behind the number. And that's a demon. Okay. 
that's the thing. And, and the anger inside is almost like a defense. Like, don't you dare come after my number 17. <laughs> you better back off. That's my number. God spoke it to me. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. He, um, the Lord has amazing ways in confirming things. And he rarely does it the same way over and over again. That's rare. He has infinite number of ways to draw us to himself. But the enemy, he threw out, he, I'm not saying the original, I don't know, you had a desire to read Esther, and I don't know if the number 17 just popped in your mind out of nothing, or you saw it some way, I don't know how that came about, and I'm not saying that wasn't the Lord, but um, the reoccurring of the number, that's not the Lord. Okay. Yeah. And so all you do is you renounce it. I renounce my affection for the number 17. Is that going to deal with the root problem? Like, because I do believe like there, there was witchcraft in my family, you know, and the things that I've, I've done, you know, in my life, like, is that because you said it, it's a form of witchcraft? Is that correct? And I wouldn't say that, but what the enemy is doing, he's using something like a number or a red car or whatever to get our attention away from the Lord. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, root issues are typically unforgiveness, self-hatred, rejection, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's probably rejection is a root issue because if you say, let's say, I got it. Oh, I see the number 17 in my mind. Oh, I see number 17 again. That means Esther. And I was just watching. I was just reading Esther. God is speaking to me. I feel special. Right. Now I feel special. Well, now we know that's the, that's rejection. Dangling something in front of you to tell you you're special. When all along the blood of Jesus already spoke how special you are yeah 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 i think i <laughs> it's hard it's hard because um you go through this process of deliverance and you think that there's i just want to know when it's when i'll be healed and i don't know what the difference is between deliverance and like healing like i'm still learning like like the other day I was talking to a friend and we were going to hang out and for some reason he had mentioned something about he, he did, everything that I interpreted was wrong. Like he said, we, we can go hang out on Tuesday, but he was intending like, let's go hang out with another friend and go do something there, which I'm completely fine with, but I took it as he did not want to hang out with me. And it literally put me in a place and I just hung up on him and I got, and I got so emotional. And then all these thoughts of my, of my ex of like him rejecting me and not wanting to not being serious with me or all these things that I was always trying to prove myself just came flooding in and like the Lord just started dealing with me because I knew that what I did was wrong. And I had to repent and I apologize, but like, I don't, I thought I was healed, you know, like I thought I, I've, I've had mm -hmm. deliverance and it's like, I don't know. I, it's, it's hard. Right. And you're going to just keep submitting yourself to the Lord and his timing and his process. You are healing. You just have more to go. So 
So you got to release yourself to this process. That spirit of rejection <clears throat> speaks to you in a lot of different ways. And, you know, there's been a lot of hurt in your life. And your emotions have been damaged. And so you look back and you say, okay, who kept rejecting me? My ex-boyfriend, he didn't want to get married. I'm still single. Okay, let me focus back on him. I want to forgive him. Okay, it goes back farther than that. Maybe my dad. He didn't stick around. Yeah. Yeah. And then this year, um, I basically got kicked out of the church I was going to. Mm. And I... And then I think about this familiar spirit. I'm like, you know, like thinking, well, maybe they were right, you know. And I just, I don't know. I'm sorry. I just. All right. Well, let's go ahead and repent. You want to submit to the Lord now. You don't want to keep submitting to these feelings. You don't want to keep submitting to these thoughts. Well, maybe they were right. Well, maybe I deserved it. Well, maybe no one will ever love me. You can't keep submitting to those thoughts. You have to submit to the Lord. Okay, come on, Elena. Just pray now. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry, Lord. Um, I'm impatient <laughs> and I'm sorry. sorry I'm not trusting it that's good keep praying now hon we're praying for you okay I want you to pray hard right now because you're going to get a healing tonight Just tell him, I'm so sorry for not trusting you, Lord. I'm sorry for not trusting you. For needing more proof that you love me. For needing more proof that you love me. And that I'm special to you. And that I'm special. So sorry, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Let it out, sweetheart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're touching Atlanta, your daughter, your little daughter. She belongs to you. The enemy has been distracting her, frustrating, her, causing all this pain and emotion to well up. And he tricked her with this number 17. He tricked her. He tricked her and said, that's proof God loved you, number 17. Well, I'm speaking to you, you devil. You are a liar. God loves her because Jesus died on the cross for her. Jesus is with her. He gave her a new heart. He gave her the Holy Spirit. You devil that's behind that number 17, I bind you right now in the name of Jesus, and you come out of there. You come out right now, you gang stalker with number 17 and 7. You come out of there right now. In the name of Jesus, I bind every monitoring spirit, monitoring, following her, tracking her, grabbing her attention. I command you to loose her now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So come out of there. Come out right now. Come out right now. You spirit of rejection. You're behind it all. You come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Go now. Come out of her emotions. Come out right now. You lying devil. You come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Go. You told her to hang up on her friend. You told her to get mad and take everything he said the wrong way. You come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of there. You spirit of rejection. Fear of rejection. Come out right now. 
come out right now being rejected by the church. You turned it against herself and told her it was all her fault. You come out right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come out of there. Go now. Go now. Come out right now. Come out of Elena right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, ladies. Pray for our sister. I command this emotional damage from the spirit of rejection to come out right now. Come out right now. You're just great. Let your tears come. Emotional destruction and damage. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Go. Go now. Come out of there. Emotional defeat. An emotional withdrawal. You come out right now. Go in Jesus' name. Loose her now. Yes. Loose her now. Up and out. Get yes. out right now. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Emotional escape, you devil. Uh. You spirit. You come out right now. Loose her. Loose her now. <laughs> come out of that buddy. All the way out. <laughs> All the way out. There's nothing wrong with Elena. That's you. <gasps> there is nothing wrong with her. She's beautiful before the Lord. She's perfect in the sight of God. You lied to her about what she looks like. You've lied to her about her worth. You come out right now. Go in Jesus' name. I bind every form of witchcraft attacking her mind now. You come out right now. Fear of witchcraft. Come out. Come out now in the name of Jesus. Go right now. Emotional fragility. You come out right now. There you are. Come out. Come out of that body. Next one. Loser. You tormentor. Come out right now. Tormenting her with emotional. So come out. Come out right now. Emotional isolation. Come out of there. Go in Jesus' name. Emotional breakdown. Come out right now. Looser in the mighty name of Jesus. Now go. Go right now. You demon that told her she was Esther. I bind you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. She's not Esther. And the Lord has a plan for her life. And the Lord has her plan to prosper her and not to harm her. He has an individual plan for her in this time, in this season in her life. She doesn't have to refer back to a Bible character. She is unique and called by the Lord, chosen by the Lord. You come out right now. Go. Come out right now. There it goes. Come out of there. You demon. Get out right now. Come out right now. False identity. Come out of there. Come out right now in Jesus' name. Looser, 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 looser. Every demonic prophetic word that's been spoken over her, I break it now in the name of Jesus. I command you to loose her. Go now. Every prophetic, demonic prophetic word that's been spoken over her life, I cancel the assignment now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out right now charismatic witchcraft go in jesus name looser looser go go now come out come out right now in the name of jesus come out right now that affection for numbers that affection for the number 17 come out right now go in jesus name looser you're a demon you come out right now you monitor and spirit looser now go go up and out up and out, up and out, monitoring, her, following her, following her. The number seven, come out right now. You've been following numbers just to repent of it right now. In the name of Jesus. That's not the Lord. No. Come out right now, looser. Insecurity, come out of there. Come out right now, go. Go in Jesus' name. Loose her now. Just repent of it. Lord, I'm sorry for following numbers. I'm fo um, I put more affection and more devotion and more worship on a number that I thought was from you than your word. And I'm sorry, Lord. I repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. I want the Holy Spirit 
I don't want a false spirit. I don't want that Kundalini spirit talking to me, giving me dreams, giving me numbers, highlighting license plates and, yeah. and configurations. I reject it now in the name of Jesus. I reject that anger that's trying to protect. I reject you. I command you to loose me now. That pride that's rising up that says, no, don't touch my numbers. Don't touch my symbols. Don't touch my dreams. You go now in the name of Jesus. Go right now. Come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Jen, are you able to pray? Help me pray for it. All those counterfeiters, I command you to go now in the name of Jesus. Counterfeits out now. Counterfeit confirmations out in the name of Jesus. Lying signs and wonders come all the way out. Lying signs and wonders, you loose and come all the way out now. All the counterfeit Holy Spirits out in the name of Jesus, come all the way out. All the counterfeiters come all the way out. All the deception out in the name of Jesus. Deceiving spirits in the mind come all the way out. All that delusion and deception all the way out of her brain in the name of Jesus, come out. All the deceiving spirits come all the way out. All the liars come out now. All those lying rejection demons out in the name of Jesus, come up and out. Witchcraft in the brain, out in the name of Jesus. All witchcraft in the mind, come out in the name of Jesus, come out now. All the witchcraft in the mind, come all the way out, looser and come out. All that witchcraft in the brain, out in the name of Jesus Christ, come out now. Come all the way out. All that divination, come out. Divination spirits, out in the name of Jesus, come up and out. All divination, loose and come out now in the name of Jesus. All those gang stalking spirits, out in the name of Jesus Christ. Gang stalkers, number stalkers, out in the name of Jesus Christ, come up and out. All the number stalking, out in the name of Jesus, come up and out now. Loose and come all the way out in the, in the name of Jesus. All the emotional roller coaster demons, out in the name of Jesus, come out. All the spirits manifesting in her emotions, out now in the name of Jesus emotional roller coaster ride out in the name of Jesus emotional instability out now loose and come up and out now in the name of Jesus Christ come out now all the emotional trauma and abuse out in the name of Jesus come out all the trauma out in the name of Jesus all that disappointment and discouragement come out now discouragement come out in the name of Jesus all that self-rejection come out now self-rejection out in the name of Jesus come up and out disappointment come out in jesus name all the disappointment all the idolatry come out in the name of jesus idolatry come out in jesus name inadequacy come out now feeling not good enough like i don't measure up out in the name of jesus christ come up and out come up and out all the inferiority come out now inferiority out in the name of jesus come up and out now come out now all the passivity come out in jesus name all passivity come out in the name of Jesus Christ. All anger and rage out now. Please forgive me, Father God, for holding on to anger, for holding on to resentments. I'm so sorry, Lord, for not forgiving myself, for not forgiving those people that have offended me. I'm so sorry, Father God. I am so sorry. All the offense out in the name of Jesus come up and out. All the offense out now in Jesus' name overly sensitive out now overly sensitive come out in the name of jesus come up and out come out now all the inadequacy come out in the name of jesus come up and out now all that confusion out in jesus name confusion come out now all confusion come out now in the name of jesus come out self-pity out in jesus name all the self-pity come all the way out in the name of jesus christ all the emotional abuse and trauma all that church hurt out in the name of jesus come out spiritual abuse out in the name of jesus christ come up and out all that spiritual abuse out in the name of jesus come up spiritual abuse out in the name of jesus all the way up all that spiritual trauma out in the name of jesus christ all the spiritual abuse come out now in the name of jesus come out now emotional abandonment spiritual abandonment out in the name of jesus come all the way up 
All that spiritual abuse come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come up and out now. All the tormenting spirits come out now. All the tormenting come out in the name of Jesus. Come up and out. All those tormentors out in the name of Jesus. All the mental torment, emotional torment, spiritual torment. Come all the way out in the name of Jesus. All those tormenting demons come out of the brain. Come out lying spirits in the mind. Come out deceiving spirits in the mind. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. All the religious spirits come out now. All the religious spirits out in the name of Jesus. All religion come out in the name of Jesus. Legalistic demons come out now in the name of Jesus. Legalism out in the name of Jesus. Come out you legalistic spirits. Come all the way up. All the legalism, all those religious spirits out in the name of Jesus. All the way out. Get out. Religious spirits come out in the name of Jesus. Come up and out. Come out you legalistic devils out of the brain right now in the name of Jesus. All the accusations come out now. Accuser of the brethren out in the name of Jesus. Come all the way up. All the accusation come out in Jesus name. Come out. You accuser. You come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come up and out now. Get out all doubt and unbelief. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. All that doubt and unbelief. Come out now. All the emotional abandonment from mom out. Come out mom. All the demons from mom out in the name of Jesus. All the demons from dad out in Jesus name. Come up and out. All that rejection from dad. Come out now in the name of Jesus. Illegitimacy out in the name of Jesus. We break off illegitimacy curses in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Illegitimacy out in the name of Jesus. All the witchcraft prayers. We break them off in the name of Jesus. Witchcraft prayers out in the name of Jesus. Psychic prayers out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out now. Pentecostal witchcraft come out in the name of Jesus Pentecostal witchcraft out in Jesus name come up and out now in the name of Jesus all the mind racing and anxiety come out now all that anxiety and fear loose and come up and out all that fear and anxiety come all the way out in the name of Jesus all the fear come all the way out in Jesus name come up and out all that anxiety come out in the name of Jesus all the condemnation come out condemnation come out in the name of Jesus all condemnation come out guilt out in the name of Jesus come out all that demonic guilt out in the name of Jesus Christ come up and out all that guilt all that regret out in the name of Jesus come up and out all the regret come out in the name of Jesus come up and out now double-mindedness come out now double-minded out in the name of Jesus double-mindedness come out in Jesus name come out now Come all the way out. All self-pity come out in the name of Jesus. All self-pity come out in Jesus' name. Self-pity out in the name of Jesus. All the doubt and unbelief come out now. Doubt and unbelief. All that self-condemnation -con come out. Self-accusation come out now. All the self-accusation come out in the name of Jesus. Come up and out now. Come out now. All the suspicion and distrust out in the name of Jesus. Paranoia come out in Jesus' name. All paranoia come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Quitting spirits, all those demons telling everybody to quit out in the name of Jesus. Come out, quitter, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come up and out. You quitting spirit, come out now in the name of Jesus. Come all the way out now. Come out now in Jesus name. Come out envy, jealousy out in Jesus mighty name. Come up and out. All the envy and jealousy come out in the name of Jesus. All abuse and trauma, emotional abuse out in the name of Jesus. All abandonment come out in the name of Jesus. All the generational divorce. We break that curse of divorce in the name of Jesus. All the generational divorce curses, we break them off. Divorce out in the name of Jesus. Division, discord, strife, arguing out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come up and out. Come up and out now in the name of Jesus Come out now. All the perversion and lust demons come out now. All the lust and perversion out in the name of Jesus. Come up and out. All lust come out now in the name of Jesus. All the gluttony come out now in Jesus name. Lust for drugs and alcohol come out in the name of Jesus Christ. All those lust demons come out now. Perversion come out in the name of Jesus. All perversion out in Jesus name. All that perversion come up and out. Come out, molestation, come out in the name of Jesus. All sexual trauma, come out now in the name of Jesus Christ. All the physical trauma, out in Jesus' name. Come up and out in the name of Jesus. 
come out accident prone, out in Jesus' name. Every curse for being, being in accidents, we break that off in the name of Jesus. Accident prone curses, out in Jesus' name. Witchcraft accidents, out in the name of Jesus, come up and out. Come out in the name of Jesus. All divination, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. All divination, out in the name of Jesus. Come out now in Jesus' name. Loose and come out, Python spirit, out in the name of Jesus. Python serpent, come out in the name of Jesus. All pride, come out in the name of Jesus. All pride, out now. Loose and come out. All the pride, arrogance, vanity, out in the name of Jesus. Come up and out now in Jesus' mighty name. Come out, cancer, out in the name of Jesus. All that infirmity, generational cancer, come out in Jesus' name. All the dormant cancer, all that hiding cancer, I command you to come out in the name of Jesus. Come out, all that generational cancer. We break that generational curse of cancer in the name of Jesus. All unforgiveness causing cancer, out in the name of Jesus Christ. All the infirmities from unforgiveness, we break those off and we forgive, Lord. I forgive those people that hurt me. I forgive my mom and dad. I'm not going to let this devil make me sick in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. All that infirmity from unforgiveness. Out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Cancer. Come out now. Autoimmune disorders. Out in the name of Jesus. All bitterness. Curse the root of bitterness in the name of Jesus. Come out. All bitterness and unforgiveness. Come out. Resentments. Come out in the name of Jesus. All rage anger, murder, out in the name of Jesus Christ. All that anger come out now in the name of Jesus Christ. We uproot and tear out every bitterness demon in the name of Jesus. Come out now. Bitter root expectancy out in the name of Jesus. All that demonic expectation come out in Jesus' mighty name. Bitter root expectancy come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out now. Every demonic assumption we command it to go now. All that assumption, come out now. All that expectation, out in the name of Jesus. Come out now in the name of Jesus. All the disappointment, all that discouragement, out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come up and out now. All that rejection, drawing rejection. We command you to go now in the name of Jesus. Fear of being rejected, come out now. Fear of abandonment, come out in the name of Jesus. Come up and out. Unloving spirits, come out now unloving spirits come out in the name of Jesus. All the unloving spirits from mom and dad come all the way out in the name of Jesus Christ. All the self-hatred come out in Jesus name. All the self-hatred come all the way out in the name of Jesus. Fear of losing salvation out in Jesus name. Fear of losing salvation. Fear of judgment out in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear of judgment come up, come up and out. Fear of the end times come out in the name of Jesus. Fear of not making the rapture come out in the name of Jesus Christ. All that religion come all the way out in the name of Jesus. All the condemnation come up and out in the name of Jesus. All that condemnation come out now. Come up and out now in the name of Jesus Christ. All that heaviness come out now. Heaviness, depression out in Jesus name. Come up and out. All the sadness and grief come out in the name of Jesus. Come up and out now. All that sadness and grief out in the name of Jesus. Come up and out now. Come up and out. All that depression, all the heaviness come out in the name of Jesus. Come up and out now in the mighty name of Jesus. All the heaviness come out now in Jesus' mighty name. Come out anxiety disorders. Come out in the name of Jesus. All that anxiety come out in Jesus' mighty name. All the anxiety and fear out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come up and out now. Come up and out in the name of Jesus. Come out now. Loose and come out now in the name of Jesus Christ. All the anger come out now. All the infirmity come out now. Witchcraft infirmities out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come up and out now. All the witchcraft infirmities come out in the name of Jesus. All the fear in the chest out in the name of Jesus Christ. All that fear come all the way up. All that fear causing constricted breathing out in the name of Jesus. All the fear causing asthma, come up in Jesus' name. Come up and out. All that fear causing asthma, come out now. If anybody needs prayer for something in particular, drop it in the chat. Is anybody getting any deliverance? Can you turn on your cameras, please? It's helpful. Thank you so much. Drop it in the chat if you can, please, and I will call it out.
Okay, come out now, slander and discord, come out now. Slander and gossip, come out in the name of Jesus, come up and out. All the slander and gossip, come out now in Jesus' mighty name. Come up and out now. All the hatred and jealousy, come out now in the name of Jesus. Come out now. All those lust demons, you false comforter demons, come out in the name of Jesus. All lust, out in Jesus' name. Come up and out now. False comfort, you come out now in the name of Jesus. All the coward spirits, fear spirits, out in the name of Jesus. Come up and out now. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out self-pity, out in the name of Jesus. All the self-pity, come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come up and out now. Self-condemnation. Come out now. Come out in the name of Jesus. Self-hate. Come out in Jesus' name. Self-hatred. Come all the way out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come up and out now. All the worry. Come out now. Worry. Nervousness. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Pressure in the head. Come out now. Pressure in the head. Come out in the name of Jesus. All witchcraft headaches. Out now. All the headaches come out now. Migraines out in the name of Jesus. Come up and out now. Slumbering spirits come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Occult demons come out now. All those occult spirits out in the name of Jesus. Come up and out now. Slumbering spirits come out now in the name of Jesus. All the slumbering spirits come out now. Loose and come out now in the name of Jesus. Come out now. Lack of concentration out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come up and out. Come up and out. Every demon attacking the concentration. Come out. Brain fog and witchcraft brain fog. Out in the name of Jesus. Come out now. Witchcraft forgetfulness. Come out now in the name of Jesus. Forgetfulness. Come out. Fibromyalgia demons. Out of the body right now in the name of Jesus. Fibromyalgia. Out in Jesus' mighty name. All that demonic pain in the body. Come all the way out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come up and out now in Jesus' name. Come up and out. All that busyness, come out now in the name of Jesus. Stagnation and delay, come out. We break every curse of stagnation in the name of Jesus. Stagnation, out now. Neuropathy, come out in the name of Jesus. All the infirmity causing neuropathy, out of the body right now. Come up and out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out now. Pride, out in Jesus' name. Arrogance, come out. Leviathan serpent. Out in the name of Jesus, uncoil and go. Leviathan, out in the name of Jesus. All that pride, come out in Jesus' name. All that demonic pain in the back, in the neck, out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come up and out now. All the witchcraft moving around the body, come out now in the name of Jesus. All that pain moving around the body, out in the name of Jesus. Python, out in Jesus' mighty name. Come up and out now. Self-righteousness, come out now. Come out, self-centeredness, all the self-demons, out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come up and out now. Get out in the name of Jesus. Every devil in the spine, every serpent in the spine, I command you to go now. All infirmity in the spine, out in the name of Jesus. Come up and out now. Come out now in the name of Jesus. All the arthritis, come out now in the name of Jesus. All that autoimmune, you come out of the hands, come out of the feet in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out, all the devils of infirmity causing arthritis and autoimmune disorders, out in the name of Jesus. Come all the way out. All the new age, out in Jesus' mighty name. All new age spirits, out now in the name of Jesus. Come out, kundalini, you false holy spirit, out in the name of Jesus. You counterfeiter, come out now. Kundalini serpent, out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come all the way out. You kundalini serpent, all that new age, come out now in the name of Jesus. All the new age witchcraft, out in Jesus' mighty name. All the fatigue, all the lethargy, all the tiredness, come all the way out in the name of Jesus. All that tiredness, come out now. Fatigue, out in Jesus' mighty name. Come up and out now. All the lethargy, come out now. All that fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come up and out now in the name of Jesus. Every hindering and blocking spirit, we command you to go now. Come out prosperity blocking spirits. Come out now in Jesus' name. All the poverty out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come up and out now. All the generational poverty curses. We break those off in the name of Jesus. You come out. You poverty devil out in the name of Jesus. People pleasing out now. Come up and out. You people pleaser spirit out in the name of Jesus. All the rejection causing that people pleasing out in Jesus' name. Come out now. Unworthiness out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come all the way out. All that demonic pain in the breast. Come all the way out. 
All the infirmity in the breast come out in Jesus' name. Come all the way out in the name of Jesus. All the unworthiness come out now. All those lying demons telling you you're unworthy, you come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out now. Unworthiness, all lying spirits in the mind. All the Freemasonry, come out in the name of Jesus. Freemasonry curses, generational curses from that Freemason in your family tree. We break it in the name of Jesus. All Freemasonry, out in Jesus' name. Eastern Star, out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out now in the name of Jesus. Come out Catholicism, out now. All those Catholic demons in the family tree, we command you to go. False religion, out in the name of Jesus. Mormonism, come out in Jesus' name. Jehovah Witness, out now in the mighty name of Jesus. All the idolatry, every curse from that false religion, from mom and dad and grandma, we break it in Jesus' name. Come up and out now. All false religion, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God, for moving mightily. We thank you, Lord, little by little, that you're helping us to reclaim our territory that the enemy took for us, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your mercy. Kelly? Thank you, Lord. We thank you so much. Good evening. Hi. Thank you, Lord. Hi, Jen. Thank you, Lord. Good evening, ladies. Let's continue on from where Jen was at. Let's keep fighting, okay? Like she said, turn on your cameras and start fighting. The devil knows when you're not fighting. So you got to let him know that you're going to fight and you're going to get these spirits out tonight. And you're going to repent. Repent for your unbelief and the fear and the anxiety. I repent, Lord. I'm so sorry for having fear, Lord. I'm so sorry, Father God, for having doubt in my mind and doubting who you are, Lord. Forgive me, Father God. I believe and I trust in you that these demons are going to leave my body, Lord, and that you're going to heal my body, Lord. I want this sickness and the infirmities out of my body, out of my mind, Lord. This control that's in my body, Lord, control in my mind, demons that control my body. Help me, Lord, through religious spirits, through religious spirits, Lord. Help me, Lord, to get them out, all this pride and this resentment and anger and bitterness, Lord. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for having that, Lord. And I repent, Lord. I repent and I'm sorry for being selfish, selfish and selfless, Lord. I want to be selfless, Lord. Help me, Lord, to die to myself. Help me to hate what you hate and to love what you love, Lord. Help me to get this anxiety out of my body. I'm so sorry for having anxiety and not casting my burdens on you, Lord, and feeling this heaviness on my back, Lord, and in my mind, and this control, this controller that controls my mind that I can't take one thought captive, Lord, that it runs on its own, Lord. Help me. I'm so sorry, Father God. I'm so sorry, and I repent, Lord. Break me down, Lord, at the foot of the cross, Lord, at Calvary where your son died. Died for my sins, Lord. Died for the person that hurt me, Lord. Help me to forgive the people that have hurt me, my mother, my dad, my family, Lord. I release them all to you, my husband, my adult children. I let them all go. I release them all to you, Lord. I'm going to get out of the way, Lord. And this unbelief in my mind, Lord, I'm going to cast it out right now. This unbelief that tells me that spirits are running my mind and in my body. I want them out right now in the name of Jesus. All this unbelief in my mind, Lord, take it away. Help me to believe and trust in you because man has failed me. People have tr um, took away my trust, Lord. I have a hard time trusting people, Lord. And I ask that you help me to trust people and that I won't rely on man and I won't manipulate people. 
I won't manipulate myself. Help me, Lord. You got to you got to get broken before the Lord. You know, I messaged brother Mike and I said I was on a phone call with the I'm going to give you a short thing that I uh that happened to me. Um I was on a phone call and I, I mean these demons were powerful. And um, I was like, I, I don't feel qualified, Lord. I don't feel qualified to get these spirits out. Now, you give me a drug addict person or a person, something that I've been through or somebody that's been, been molested, lust spirits. Now, I know those. I know how those operate. But I have no idea how kundalini spirits operate. Because when I went to church, the church rejected me. Because I thought they were weird when they would do the things that they did. And I was like, I, I can't, I can't do these kinds of things. And I don't want nobody touching me. I don't want nobody laying hands on me. I ain't going through no fire tunnel. I'm not doing any of that. And so I got rejected pretty much. And I said, and so I messaged Mike at brother Mike. And I said, I, I don't know. And I was giving him the list and he said, uh, what did he say? Re um, they're powerful demons. So there has to be a powerful repentance. And he left me with that. And so all I've been thinking about today is how do we get to that point of being powerful in our repentance? Because the demons know when we're not repentant and they'll hide in there. So you got to mean what you mean and you got to let the devil know, are you sick and tired of living the way you live? Are you going to continue on in your life and letting the demons rise up? Or are you going to let God rise up in your life? So you got to get to that point of a powerful repentance and you got to let the devil know that you are so sorry for ever doubting God and doubting the power that God has. He's got so much power. He has the beginning and he is the end. He has the final say in everything. The devil has to get permission to do what he does. So you got to think of it that way. I had to think of it that way. The devil was trying to get me not to talk to that person. And, uh, you know, powerful repentance. That's what I'm going to work on with this person. You've got to repent for that kundalini spirit you got in you. That shaking that you do. You got to get that out. The religious spirits. Thinking that you're above God and not believing what God can do in your life. False repentance. Get that out. All that fear and doubt. Get it out. I'm so sorry, Lord. Let's go. Come on. You guys start talking. You start telling the Lord right now. Whatever you've been doing, you tell the Lord right now, I repent. I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry, Father God, for doubting you, Lord. I'm so sorry, Lord, for doubting what your word says, Lord, and the promises in your word, Lord. I'm so sorry, Father God, for putting myself before you, Lord. I'm so sorry, Lord, for rejecting myself. I'm so sorry for hating myself, Lord. I'm so sorry for letting these demons torment me at night when I know when I go to bed that I have to pray to you, Lord, that they won't torment me anymore, that they won't molest me anymore, they won't hurt me anymore, Lord, that I'll walk in obedience to you, Lord, according to your word and your promises, Lord. This guilt and shame that the devil puts on me, I will not receive anymore. Hallelujah, I will not receive any guilt and shame from the enemy.
You've given me all power and authority to tread on scorpions and serpents, Lord. If a lion is in my face and you tell me, Lord, that I will not fear that lion that's in my face, then I will not fear. I will not fear. I will not fear poverty. I will not fear what happens to my family. I won't fear what happens to my mom and dad. I won't fear what happens to my husband. I release all these people to you, Lord. I let them all go. I let my mom go. I let my dad go. I want to be in freedom, Lord. I want to be in freedom in you, Lord. I want to serve you, Lord, because you are an almighty God. You are an almighty God, Lord, that I'm just passing through, Father God. And one day I will be before you, Father God. I will be before you, Lord, that you wiped every tear and counted every tear that I cried, Lord, in this pain, this pain, Lord. I release it all to you, Father God. Restore my joy. Restore my peace, Lord, to me, Lord. I want it, Lord. I want it now, Lord. Help me, Father God. Set me free because in your word it says, they who set who, you set us free, Lord. You say to cast our burdens on you, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Father God, to break these chains. These chains that hold me down, that cripple me. This crippling spirit, I let it go right now. This crippling spirit in my veins, Lord. I let it go in my bones, Lord. Release, release right now. Let them go right now. Every satanic spirit, every antichrist spirit, loose them right now. I bind you up right now in chains and fetters. You come out right now in the name of Jesus. You loose their hands. You loose their feet right now. Every monitoring spirit, every witchcraft spirit, loose them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Adultery spirits, fornication spirits, loose them right now in the name of Jesus. All that hate, self-hate, go right now from the past let that past go right now in the name of Jesus. I release my past to you, Father God. I let it go and I repent right now, Lord. I let it go right now. I will not let that hold me down anymore. I won't be chained down anymore, Lord. I release it to you, Father God. I let it all go right now in the name of Jesus Christ. This addiction I let it go, alcoholism, pharmacia drugs. I release it right now in the name of Jesus. Go right now in the name of Jesus. Every tormentor in the mind, come out of the frontal lobe. Come out right now. Migraines, go right now in the name of Jesus. Migraines, come out. Come out of there right now. All dizziness, come out right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, all this suffering, all the suffering since you were a child, loose right now in the name of Jesus, that hurt little girl that's in there, come out right now, every altered spirit, go right now, schizophrenia demons, come out right now, all that suffering, all that torment, bulimia, anorexia, Come out right now, all that fear, deep-seated fear. Come out of that chest and come out of that gut right now. Come out right now. Come out fear. Come out of that chest. Come out of that gut right now. Go. Loose right now. In the name of Jesus, go. My joy will be restored. My joy will be restored. I will not be enslaved. I will not be enslaved to the enemy. Come out right now. Go. Let's go. Come on. Cough them up. Let's go. In the name of Jesus. Loose. Come out of that chest right now. Go. Go. Loose right now. Come on. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You belong to Jesus Christ. Come out right now. Every lie. Every lie. You loose them right now. 
every lie that tells them that they're not worth anything. Come out right now. Come out in the name of Jesus. You come out right now. Every lie, every lie that tells you you're not worthy enough. You come out right now. Come on, let's fight. Come on. In the name of Jesus, go. You know my needs, Lord. You know my needs, Lord. Come out. Come out right now. All that emotional turmoil. Come out right now. Emotional turmoil. Come out right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord. I ask that you change their mindset, Lord. Lord, you are my refuge my place of safety. You are my God. I declare he will rescue you from every trap, every ensnared by the devil. He protects you. He is faithful to his promises and his armor. He shields you with his wings. Oh, hallelujah. He shields you with his wings. He covers you with his feathers. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Lord. He is faithful. He is faithful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your promises and your armor, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the dark anymore. Don't fear the dangers. He will protect you wherever you go. Thank you, Lord. I am free. I am free. He who sets free. It's free indeed. I am stress-free. I am anxiety-free. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I am stress-free. I die to self. Thank you, Lord. I am joyful. I am joyful, and I will hang on to that promise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. I have overcome all my fears. You are an overcomer. Don't take hold of those lies anymore. You are an overcomer. Thank you, Father God. He protects you. He is your refuge. He is your refuge. Take hold of that. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for your promises, Lord. Hallelujah. Come out of there, all that fear, loose them from the gut area and come out of their chest. All the fears that they have come out right now. Every fear spirit, loose them right now in the name of Jesus. Forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me with your blood, Lord. Cleanse me with your blood, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for dying on that cross at Calvary, Lord. And restoring me back to you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I worship you, Father God. I worship you, Lord. And I just thank you for what you're doing in my life, Father God. That I will not let any demon tell me that I am not worthy. That I am not worthy. I will not take hold of that lie anymore, Lord. I will hang on to your promises, Lord, of what you say, who I am in you, Lord. My identity is in you, Father God, not in the world, Lord, not in my circumstance, Lord. I will overcome my circumstances, Lord. I forgive the people that hurt me. I forgive the man that raped me and molested me. I let it all go, all the secrets. All the secrets, I let them all go. I let them all go and I give them to you, Father God. All the things that I've been holding inside, Lord, that I have not released, Lord, I let it all go. Every demonic spirit that's hiding in their stomach, hiding in their rib cage, hiding in their backs, loose them right now. I speak healing over their spines right now in the name of Jesus in their necks come out of their neck and come out of their minds right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, they repented. They repented, devil. They repented. You have no authority. Come out. You have no authority. They repented. I know they have. 
come out. All that suffering, come out right now. All that sickness, come out right now. All that anxiety and fear, come out right now. Nervousness, come out right now. Feeling nervous, come out right now. Feeling unworthy, feeling unworthy. All that guilt and shame. The devil loves to put guilt and shame on us. Come out right now, every tormentor. Come out, every hindrance. Come out right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Every curse, every curse from your mom or your dad or friends. Come out right now, every curse. Every curse that's been placed over their lives. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. <coughs> I uproot you right now. And I put an ax to those roots. Come out in the name of Jesus. All that hate, hatred, all the hatred, hidden hatred. Come out right now. In the name of Jesus, I die to self, Lord. I die to myself, Father God. Work in me, Lord. Work in me, Father God. Help me to shine in the darkness. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear no evil. The arrows that fly by me, they will scatter in the name of Jesus, all the arrows will scatter. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, every arrow that comes against me, go now in the name of Jesus. Arrows on your back, go right now in the name of Jesus. Go right now in the name of Jesus. Go, go, every offense, every offense, go right now. In the name of Jesus, all offenses come out right now. Go right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you are so faithful, Lord. You are so faithful to us, Lord. Oh, you are so faithful, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for blessing us, Lord. Thank you for blessing us with deliverance, Lord, the children's bread, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in these ladies' lives, Lord. Thank you for their healing, Lord. Any cancer demons, come out right now. Any heart problems, come out right now in the name of Jesus. Heart problems, come out of that heart right now. Broken heart, anxiety in your heart, come out right now brokenness broken heart come out right now in the name of jesus all brokenness in your heart oh release right now in the name of jesus christ i let it all go lord i release it all to you father god i thank you lord for your promises that i will hang on to your promises lord thank you lord for your love Thank you for your agape love, Lord. Thank you for loving me first, Lord. I worship you, Lord, and I just thank you. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in my life, Lord. Any ought that's hidden in there, come out right now. Ought, any ought that you have towards anybody, release that right now. Any ought. Come out, all unforgiveness, whoever hurts you, let it go right now. Somebody's not letting go, let it go right now. All that ought, let it go right now. All that sickness and infirmities, go right now. All that unforgiveness, go. Wanting justice, come out right now in the name of Jesus. The Lord is the judge. Let it all go. God knows what you've been through. He knows. 
And he needs you to release it and let it all go right now. Just release it all right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, all that suffering, suffering from childhood abuse, emotional abuse, let it all go. Every tormentor, bipolar, schizophrenia, come out right now. All that hurt and pain that drives you to sin, come out right now. Sinful nature, let it all go right now. Hating people, let it all go right now. Hating people, let it all go. God commands us to love our enemy. We love people. He commands us to love people. I place the needs of others above. I repent, Lord, for hating your people, Lord. Yes, get to the miracle list. Continue in your miracle list on forgiveness. And God loves you so much. He knows you're faithful. You get on this Zoom call and you fight. You guys are strong women of God. Don't let the devil steal that from you. He likes to steal things. He tried to steal that from me. That I thought I couldn't pray for somebody. And it was all lies from the devil. God is more powerful than the devil. The Holy Spirit is your friend, and he's right there with you. He's right here tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. If there's anything else I can pray for, write it in the chat. And you guys keep on your miracle list, and you keep fighting that good fight of faith. Thank you, Lord. Robo Shirabaka. Robo Shirabaka and Meki Roboko Rabashi Roboko. If you can sing in tongues, let's sing in tongues. Rabashi Roboko Amaki Rabaka Robo Shoboko Boto Namaki Rabaka Robo Shirabaka. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for these beautiful women, Lord. Thank you for helping them, Lord, tonight. I have nothing to do with it, Lord, but you do it all. Holy Spirit, you do it all. You're so powerful. So powerful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives, Lord, including mine. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in my life, Lord, and in these ladies' lives, Lord, that we continue to fight that good fight of faith, Lord, that we keep climbing up that ladder, Lord, to get to you. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for loving us first, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Break us down, Lord. Break us down, Lord. Crucify this flesh, Lord. Beat yourself into subjection, just like Paul did. Crucify that flesh and that mind. Take those thoughts captive, ladies. You can do it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Okay, ladies, you have a blessed week, and I will see you Monday. God bless you. Good night. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Robo Shirabaka, Ebe Shiroboko, Amen.